Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while. Had some personal things I was dealing with and well, it was deer season, so I focused on that a little bit. So, uh, well, obviously I was still working, but I just I haven't made any videos for a couple months. Uh, but I have been wanting to make a video about this particular um, project or job, and now I have the opportunity to do it. So we got our usual 637. And, well, hold on, safety first. So we got jack stands. And then we've got a pen here that we are gonna put up in this hole for the apron. So that if the apron closes, that ear right there will touch the pin and it will only close to about at about here because I'm going to be in here working. Okay. This is called a router and that kind of gets drugged through the ground to cut to cut the dirt and it's not supposed to be bent. You can see how that's folded over right there. Well, it's supposed to be straight like that. So that way it just drops straight into the ground, breaks the edge and cuts good. So that sucker's all bent. And the reason it, it's bending, well, it's wore out. You got you know, pretty much no bolt hole, a little bit of a bolt hole. And you can see how it's supposed to be, where it's got meat below each bolt hole. So basically, what we gotta do is we gotta take off the router insert. We have to take off this cutting edge because we have to get all the way in that crack. And then we're going to, I, I'm pretty sure this one's been done before because I can see you can see that uh, discoloration in the steel. That's a weld right there, a little darker, that darker spot. Now factory, factory cat, this, so these are called router inserts is what we're gonna be changing. And what factory cat is, is they have that piece, it's like inch and a half thick. It goes all the way up inside that. So what we're gonna be changing it out to is called a half insert. It's essentially replacing half of, of the original. Now you can change out the whole thing, but that involves removing this entire piece, taking that out. And I've actually never had anybody ask me to do that. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, this side's definitely been done. So basically, we're going to get our measurements from like the center of hole up, back, front, and make sure that I know where um, the new one is going to sit correctly. Come through here with the plasma and cut this out. Now, some of you that talk shit on my plasma cutter, like, oh, you need to put that down and use a torch and this and that. This is, this exact job is one of the reasons that I bought a bigger plasma cutter so that I could do these, specifically on the 57s, not so much the 37s. But when you're changing out a router insert that somebody else has already done, most likely, they did not do 100% penetration weld here. And there's gonna be a gap, an air gap in there. Well, what happens in the air gap, it's gonna get rusty. And if there's a hole even, it could get packed full of dirt. And guess what? Your torch is not gonna cut through that very well. I know, I have tried it. I did 
tons of these things with a torch before I got the bigger plasma and it was a real pain in the butt. So we're gonna use the plasma and we could just blow right through that because the plasma doesn't care about rust. And my plasma will easily cut this inch and a half. So we're gonna get the dirt knocked off, get the router off, get that cutting edge off, kind of maybe wire wheel the dirt, and then we'll get some measurements, come up with a game plan, make sure that we're putting everything in the right spot. We need, also need to make sure that they put it in the right spot because there's a there's a procedure for putting those in, the way that the holes have to line up with the floor and everything, because obviously if that's wrong, up or down, then it won't cut right or the router will wear out funny or fast. So we'll get it cleaned up and we'll go from there. Hey, you can see we got the router off and see how that's definitely folded over, mostly because these three had bolts in it, these two had nothing, so when it pulled on here, it just folded it over. Also, if the operator was cutting and they tried to turn, if they tried to turn right, that would also put a ton of force on that, which could also cause that. And you can see we got cutting edge. This piece right here is called the frog or the mole board. And then these are all the, the bolts that hold that on. There's three separate cutting edges. So I'm gonna go from the front side and knock these out. And the cutting edge will probably stay there just long enough to get all the bolts out. And then you can kind of hit it and it will fall down. And we're going to put all new hardware because as you saw, you know, these bolts get drugged through the ground and threads are all messed up and jacked up and it's not worth trying to fight putting, putting the old hardware back on there. It, it's just not worth it. So we just, every time we change a cutting edge or insert or anything like that, you just put new hardware. Just like that. I'm gonna clean all that dirt up.
got that. You got the wire wheel right there. It's definitely been changed before. I'm not sure. I may have, I may have done it. I can't remember. Um, so because this has been done before, basically where this and then the floor meet, it creates like a little triangular area. And when the factory assembles these, they put a weld in there and it's really hard to get to because it's like in this area behind this really thick part and there's no way to like you can't get to it so what I would usually do is if it was a factory one I would just cut down here I would just cut this whole thing out and then I would sit over here and just slice away at that until I got to those welds and then I could break that piece off. But because this one's been done, it's impossible to weld inside there. So I know that that's not going to hold it up. So I should be able to cut right about in the center of that top weld with the plasma to here, down to about there, which is where the floor is. And I should be able to air arc the rest of the welds and the weld on the inside. And technically this should fall off because there's no weld on the inside where the factory puts it. So let's hope that all goes to plan. See, it's got stress on it. It's, ar it's already pulled this way from the cut. So I'm gonna air arc those other outside welds and hopefully it falls off. All right, we're gonna be. Uh, stupid camera, you can't see it. Uh, 600 amps, air arcing on 600 amps using 516 carbons. 600 is kind of high for this. You don't need 600 amps. You could easily use 250 or 300 for a smaller carbon. You know, for all you guys starting out, don't be intimidated by people who have, you know, big fancy equipment. You really don't need all of that to get the job done. This just makes the job go like five times faster. Anyways, 516 carbon on 600 amps. Feel like it blows through the material really well. I could probably run 3 8 but I feel like it kind of loads up a little bit and leaves carbon deposits. It's kind of hard to cut. So we're gonna we're gonna blow that sucker off.
So the area that I'm talking about, or that I was originally talking about is, is right in here. This, they, they weld this to that when they assemble this whole bottom piece. And there's no way to get that weld out right there without you literally cut this off, cut this whole piece out, and then you be left with a big piece here, and then you just cut away at this until you get that, and then you can get it out. Pretty much, you literally end up melting this whole entire thing off into just a giant puddle of slag. It's very time consuming, it can be frustrating if you don't have the right stuff. So, you can see we got, that all cut out pretty good. So we'll get this cleaned up. We'll probably touch up a couple spots with the air arc just to make it as even as possible. Maybe hit that a little bit just to eliminate some of the grinding. And then we'll grind it. We'll prep the new one and get her going. Okay, so on this um, insert, this is how they come. Sometimes they'll put like a bevel like this on there, sometimes they don't. I don't feel like it's enough bevel, so, and there's no bevel on the inside, this would be the outside. So we're gonna bevel both of these sides a little bit more so we can get close to 100%. Um, it's a very high stress area and I put it when I was first started doing these I put a couple on that they weren't 100% and I've never had any issues uh, it's always good though you know I mean that's inch and a half or so and you know it, it'd be good to have it all all 100% so we're gonna bevel bevel both sides of this get it sanded down and then hopefully she'll uh, get tacked into place the first time and everything will kind of kind of be straight basically you tack it up there and then I'm gonna check a couple measurements to make sure that the, the plane is right and then we should be good to go
Okay, we got our tack in place. You can see now with the bevel like that, we got a nice gap there to where, um, you know, I could put a bead on this side and I can easily burn back into that from the other side. Got a nice little gap there. That'll all weld up nice. Nice and easy weld there. On the inside, you can kind of see pretty much the whole distance of that frog. It's got a slight bevel on it and there's about an eighth of an inch gap there. So when we weld that up, that'll all tie in nice and have a nice thick, thick weld right there. So what we're gonna do is just kind of skip around, put, excuse me, put a bunch of weld on it. That way I know it can't move. And then we're gonna start burning it out. I think I usually do the outside first. I don't, I don't really think it matters. So we'll get it all welded in and then we'll weld this so that it's about flush. And then I'm gonna put a piece of, cause this is a skin. This is the original wall right here. And that's technically a little bit wore out. I don't have enough material with me to do a whole piece as you can kind of see that line there but i do have a piece big enough where we could kind of put it put it right here usually i like to put something kind of over this kind of covering the weld a little bit because i think the weld is a little bit um not weaker but less abrasion resistant than this this is probably like a um what do they call that uh a weldox 700 which is what this should be made out of equivalent to like ar 500 wear resistance or so, something like that so if, if i have a piece of ar 400 covering that weld it just lasts a little bit longer i think before stuff like this happens plus if you have a small piece right here it will also protect the bigger bigger piece of skin so that if that wears out first if you get if you catch it you could change that out before the dirt gets underneath here and starts lifting this and it's kind of hard to see but the dirt the dirt has got under here and it is just slowly pushing it's slowly going to push that out so this will need to be replaced pretty soon but I, I don't have enough material with me to do that. So we're gonna, we're gonna start getting this thing welded out.
All right, well, we got we got this side all welded on that. That's six passes. I feel like that's more than enough strength-wise to hold it. There's still a little bit of uh, the plate sticking out here. Um, I don't see any issue with, with it being like that. Plus, it doesn't really get anywhere right there because the router is always protecting it. So we're gonna leave that alone. Now we'll come in here and get all this welded up. All right, well, we got this outside welded out here. A little underneath. I didn't wire wheel it. And then inside, got one root pass way down in there and you can kind of see, kind of, um, that weld on the outside blew through a little bit. So when I weld the inside here, it'll catch that and it'll be extremely strong so let's get to welding get out of here and get this done All right, there we go, I'm done. Well, done with the welding. Um, so every time you take a cutting edge off, there's, you know, packed dirt and stuff that gets underneath there. So it's always a good idea to wire wheel that. And then also you're gonna have to wire wheel 
the, the back side of the cutting edge. So when you put it on there, put it back on there, there's no dirt in there. So when you bolt it down, it's nice metal to metal contact. So we're gonna get, get that one cleaned up and then I'll show you how I put those on without using the crane. It's pretty heavy. The center one is a real pain in the butt without a crane. Um, but we're gonna do the, the router first. way that I found to get this up there is the pry bar in the middle. Put it in the middle. Slide it up there. Then you can hold that. Slide the bolts in. Just like that. Pretty much same, same process. Not really a center hole. There's six holes, but you kind of get the same idea. One, two, three, two, three. You kind of get it on there, and you can. this too far down is it'll interfere with these especially if they're brand new and the edges all the way to the end also that weld if it sticks way up or comes way out this will rest on it won't quite seat right in that corner so just two little things there That's on, tighten down. Much better. down.
All right, got the got her all done here. You can see, nice and straight. Nice, nice cutting. It's just, it's nice and straight. Definitely compared to what it was. So you can see that. Got, got everything bolted on. And then we just leave leave little dingleberries on there. So customer gets a little little extra wear item on there. Yep. There you go. Get all my stuff cleaned up here. Get out of here. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I promise I'll make some more videos. So, stay tuned.